Hey Beacon, welcome home to your Bounce Back Blueprint Community Podcast, where you are challenged to be, do, and have God's best as you thrive on your journey from setback to success. I'm your Bounce Back Guide, Tiffany Huff Struthers, and I'll be guiding you on the journey by sharing tips, tools, and the tea on how I was able to bounce back from escaping death, healing from heartbreak, and finding hope in homelessness. And then I wrote an award-winning book all about it. And shout out to God. Ever since I was courageous enough to share my story, my life and the lives of women around the world have been forever changed. And as a member of the Bounce Back Blueprint community, I'm called to teach you to do the same. So grab your journal and let's build this blueprint. Hey, Beacon, hey, before we begin to build the blueprint this week, I wanted to take a moment and let you know that this week's episode is being brought to you by Coffee and Clarity Purpose Over Pandemics. That's right. Coffee over Clar- Coffee and Clarity Purpose Over Pandemics is sponsoring this episode because we are doing an encore of the experience. If you are new around here and not familiar with Coffee and Clarity, let me invite you in on this amazing experience. Coffee and Clarity is a mini retreat that now happens virtually where you are going to be challenged and equipped to create covenant connections, to open up and confront what it is that you need to conquer so that you can begin to prioritize purpose over pandemics in this season. I want to briefly share with you what one of the women who attended Coffee and Clarity Purpose Over Pandemics last month had to say about the experience. I was truly blessed this morning to have attended Tiffany Huff Struthers Coffee and Clarity Purpose Over Pandemics session. And session is not the right word to describe the experience. It was part healing circle, part Bible study, part tough love, truth conversation that forced me to be honest with myself, show myself some grace, extend a big hug to others, and ultimately to acknowledge that God is the master orchestrator of my life. Tiffany, God has his hand on your life and I am honored to be a witness to the great things he is doing and the doors he will open. Thank you for your obedience, your insight, your grace, your preparation for today and for the and for guiding us through the experience so masterfully. We are all blessed as a result of today's experience. So I want to invite you to the encore to Coffee and Clarity purpose over pandemics. The doors are now open. The experience will take place on Saturday, October 17th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You do not want to miss it. The link to reserve your spot is in the show notes. It is tiffanyhuffexperience.com slash C and C. Now let's get into building the blueprint with a rewind episode. Do not despise small beginnings. Today, let me tell you about my life. So if you have been following along, if this is not your first time listening to the podcast, or if you listen to the last episode of the podcast, if you follow me on social media or you get my emails, then you know this past weekend I hosted my kickoff event for the year um, over the course of two days, Saturday and Sunday, entitled The Exposed Experience. And The Exposed Experience um, was Saturday Coffee and Clarity, a monthly women's experience that I um, lead. And then on Sunday, I did my first live podcast recording for the Tiffany Huff experience. And the subject of the exposed experience was really all about getting exposed and standing up and being the woman who you are. Um, Really um, getting naked for lack of a better way to say it and just being open to sharing what your setback has been or is that God wants to use um, through you to make an impact on 
other people or those he has assigned to you according to his divine purpose and plan. And everything was phenomenal. Um, Saturday's Coffee and Clarity session was sold out and there were lots of new women in the space as well as some of uh, the veterans. And Sunday's live podcast recording was very well attended as well. A good mix of new faces and some of my um, regular um, supporters were present. So it was great. However, when I arrived at the live podcast recording, I rec- I realized that I did not have the adapter for my computer. So that meant that Um, My computer was running on limited battery life, but I said, you know what? It's okay. We will make it work, right? Um, And so we we proceeded with the live podcast recording after exhausting all options for being able to get an adapter brought to the location, um, which was about 40 minutes from my home. So it wasn't an option to have someone bring it from home. So we kind of had to make the best of it. And I decided, well, I will record until it dies. And then whatever I have to fill in or edit, I will do that. And all was well. I got home and I proceeded to review the recording and started the editing process and realized that I had recorded a very large portion of the live podcast prior to the computer dying. I started the editing process and then everything disappeared. And when I mean everything disappeared, I mean everything is gone. I have tried everything I could think of and everything that my cousin Google could think of to recover the recording that I was in the process of editing because I intended to share it with you today um, and was really excited about the live podcast and being able to share it with you today. And then everything went away. Everything disappeared. And I've spent um, a large portion of today trying to recover that episode to no avail. So finally, I decided because I have made the commitment to ensure that you get something from me every Tuesday because I am committed to being consistent, I decided that I needed to move forward and share something with you, even though I am not happy about the fact that the content is lost. However, um, I'm not discouraged, right? Even with all of the challenges that has come that have come with having a live podcast recording and then now realizing that there is no recording of the live podcast, not because my computer battery died, but because of whatever kind of computer glitch I decided I was going to press forward. Um, and I thought it was pretty funny that um, this is a setback to a setback that I can use to make an impact, right? Because I am sharing that I had this experience. I am not happy about it, um, but I'm moving forward anyway. And um, I thought it was interesting this morning when I went on Facebook, um, one of my Facebook memories came up and it was from last year on this very day, January 8th. And it was Isaiah 55, um, verse 8. And it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. Um, And of course, I had a a paraphrase of that, but it was that scripture. And as I was struggling with recovering the lost audio file and even thinking about the, the fact that I did not have the entirety of the recording, I started to think, wow, um, when I saw this verse, you know, maybe 
this was not the live recording that God felt that I was to share with you. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time today and just talk about not despising small beginnings because our ways are not his ways and our thoughts are not his thoughts. And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is I could very easily have gotten discouraged and frustrated about the fact that I had this entire event with the intention to be able to share a live podcast recording. However, even though I do not have it to share, I did have the event. So sometimes we look at what we have and we think it is so small or it hasn't made enough impact or it hasn't worked out the way we want it to work out and we get discouraged. And we start to think that what we've started to do is not the right thing. Or we feel like it doesn't make sense to continue trying. That our efforts are for naught. And I came through this evening after many attempts of trying to recover what I've lost to tell you that whatever you feel like you've lost, whatever time you invested in doing something that you know God has called and led you to do, even if it hasn't turned out the way you thought it would in this season, does not mean it's not going to have an impact anyway. I'm a firm believer that the seasons of sowing and harvesting are on God's schedule. And when you plant a seed, when you make an investment, you have no idea when you will reap your harvest. You have no idea when you will see um, or how long you will continue to see the return on said investment. So I don't know what maybe you started with or you wanted to start the year doing, what you made an attempt to start the year doing on the first or second or third day of of January and today is the 8th and you feel like your efforts were for not or you've already had a challenge and had to start again or you're reconsidering whether or not you should start again. I want you to know that you should, that you should not despise small beginnings and that even though it may not look the way you expect it to expected it to look or you may not receive the outcome that you thought you were going to receive, it does not mean you are not in alignment. And it does not mean that you're not doing what God would have you to do. His ways are not your ways and his thoughts are not your thoughts. And that is straight from his word. It is truth. And so I want you to consider as you, as you're starting this year and trying to build momentum or looking to start something new that Small beginnings are not to be despised. Whatever you have to offer to him, offer it to him. We are not going to use the words just and only. So I wanted to talk about um, these two words because they are two words that I feel need to go. Just and only. They are two to go. If you don't receive anything else from this episode Um, This is what I want you to take away from it. Just and only are two to go. And you might be thinking why. I will tell you, I've been having so many conversations um, in different places with different people where just and only consistently come up and I have to um, intercede and ensure that the person I'm speaking to is mindful of what she is saying. For example... Oh, I just wrote this book. It's no big deal. Oh, I only have 10 people um, subscribed to my email list. Oh, I had this event and there were just two people there. Listen, we are not despising small beginnings. The words just and only are two to go because they are indications that you are despising your small beginnings, that you are diminishing the power of one. If there is one, there is one. It is not just one. It is only one. It is not only one. It is the one. I shared this briefly on Sunday.